great pleasure to be with you uh, today, all the uh, customers, and uh, tell you something more about our approach, our experience of uh, SAP rollouts. Um, we will present some uh, success scenarios and give you some uh, advice how to avoid the traps in planning and carrying out the project. Uh, before we go to the details, I would like to shortly uh, show you some numbers uh, of our company, all for one Poland. So if we can move on, thank you, Michal. Uh, we've been operating on the market uh, since uh, uh, 25 years, so it's a long time. Uh, we uh, got the chance to work with SAP uh, services. We employ more than 470 people and uh, with that team of our consultants, we got the chance to uh, carry out more than 2,000 projects. Uh, we perceive ourselves as a number one Polish uh, company on the market. And thanks to joining uh, All for One um, Germany, we, we can use the uh, platinum uh, partner statu status of uh, SAP and be a part of United VARS, which is very, very important when we consider rollout uh, projects. Uh, can we go further? Okay, as Roan said, uh, we are operating not only in Poland, but uh, mostly or uh, from the beginning globally. Um, in the current uh, quarter, we uh, the level of uh, exports of our services uh, reaches 40%, which shows you uh, how much uh, services we sell and uh, with uh, how many companies we can work with. On the right, right um, hand side, uh, you can see the, the countries where we got the chance to carry out, to uh, do, implement the rollout uh, projects. Uh, in Poland, uh, we have our headquarter in Poznan, which is not that far from uh, Germany and Berlin. Can we go further? Okay. Our key competences uh, include uh, comprehensive support for entire subsystem lifecycle, starting from SAP um, implementation, of course, including uh, rollouts, through managed services, security, and ending up with software development in SAP and not only SMP uh, in other programming languages. Okay. Um, our co work uh, with the clients who have trusted us uh, is mostly based on a tailor mode cooperation. Um, why? Uh, every single client is different. And the same if we talk about rollouts, uh, Michal will show you uh, some kind of uh, uh, methodology, but uh, uh, we need to remember that every company has different needs. And we try to adjust to those needs and we try to um, help you with that what is right now uh, a problem for you. Um, as a service company we are ready to build templates for you if this is the, the need we are able to uh, be responsible for the whole rollout project uh, we can uh, manage the whole rollout programs many pro uh, rollout projects uh, planned uh, in a couple of months but also we can execute only some tasks some implementation tasks we can be a part uh, of uh, separate module implementation, we can be responsible only for data migration, or uh, we can cover only legal uh, requirements uh, for a specific country. It depends on you in what scope you would like to cooperate with us, and this is something what we definitely define at the beginning of uh, cooperation. Um, right now, I would like to share with you some information about our experience. Um, I would start our international presence with Heineken International, the beverages company from Netherlands. Uh, this is our crucial and I would say complex experience uh, of international rollout projects. The client was looking for the company 
who would be ready to take over the whole uh, corporate rollout programs in a very wide scope. You can see many modules, many SAP modules, uh, and many countries uh, where we, uh, within six years, uh, got the chance to um, implement uh, the SAP system. Um, for uh, that requirement, we were um, we were uh, asked to build a separate team of consultants who was responsible uh, for uh, every single project. And within six years, we maintained that uh, team of consultants in order to deliver in every country uh, the system. As you can see, uh, within a year, we did uh, one up to three rollout projects. Of course, the language of the uh, project was English, um, which is uh, kind of must in international uh, cooperation. Another example uh, of our um, uh, rollout references and our experience uh, is a Swiss company, uh, Von Roll. Uh, this is an uh, industrial company that focuses on the production and delivery of systems for uh, electrical power generation, transmission and distribution. In that case, the client asks us to support the team of, uh, um, of our team of people, consultants, who were responsible for uh, planning, carrying out the implementation uh, of rollouts of system, implementation of SAP system uh, in rollout uh, projects. Um, in each module, FI, CO, PP, and QM, as you can see, this uh, scope of uh, project was very small, comparing, for example, to uh, Heineken. Uh, in each module, we dedicated a consultant who was responsible for every single project. We did eight projects in eight countries uh, in the time of four years. The next example we would like to share with you is the company by Stronic. It's a Swiss laser company, leading supplier uh, of solution for the uh, sheet material industry. Um, in that case, we also don't have a very wide uh, scope of modules, but we were responsible for corporate rollout programs. And the client asked us also to build a team of consultants who will be responsible for the whole program. Of course, with a program uh, manager leading, project uh, manager leading uh, person who was uh, also on our uh, side. Uh, with that team, within two years, we did eight projects uh, to, um, uh, to eight countries, as you can see on the map. Can we go further? Okay. Um, the last example of our uh, experience I would like to share with you is the uh, Dutch company Vavin Group, uh, supplier of plastic uh, piping system. And as you can see, this is maybe not an uh, international uh, example, but uh, for sure European one. We got a chance uh, to uh, carry out the rollout to Poland. We were asked to take uh, over uh, from the team, IT team uh, in Netherlands, uh, this project, uh, just to make sure that the system will be uh, relevant for Polish legal, um, uh, legal requirements. And uh, because uh, we did a good job, our experience uh, has, be, uh, has, uh, has been appreciated and the client uh, has been comm commissioned um, uh, to us uh, new projects in Czech Republic and then in Baltic City. For that client, we also got the chance to build uh, the team of consultants who were responsible, let's say, for every single wave of the rollout uh, programs. Besides that, you know, if we could go further, besides uh, that uh, references that we've just shown you, we did, of course, a lot of uh, small projects from Germany, small rollout projects from Germany to uh, Poland, from uh, Denmark to Poland, from France to Poland. And we were responsible for different kind of scope. 
uh, if there is a need, we can be all, uh, uh, only responsible for uh, legal part of requirements. Uh, and of course, if you have uh, many subsidiaries all over the world, we can take responsible for execution of multi project rollout project for uh, big internationals we can uh, cooperate with you based on a few days of uh, consultancy or we can plan the whole schedule the whole um, uh, budget uh, for every single project uh, if there is a need we can also involve uh, a few consultants or build a separate team for you uh, responsible for the whole program and of course, the time, depending on your needs, uh, uh, we can plan long-lasting cooperation or a very short one. Flexibility, the diversity, this is something was, uh, what uh, definitely distinguish us um, among others. And this is something which is worth to um, mention. Um, with that, I would like to hand over to Michal, who will definitely start with a question why roll out itself? Michal? Yeah, indeed, indeed, asking that question uh, is, I believe, a very important one because it allows us to better understand what we want to achieve as a result of a rollout. And uh, based on cooperation with our customers, being a partner in multiple projects and programs of rollouts uh, internationally or globally, we, we are certain that the main driver for those projects is that basically we are living in a state of a constant change. We, we could even say that we live in a changed uh, economy. Sometimes those changes are intended because company wants to grow. The measure of a success is a growth uh, in a sense. So basically uh, also organization want to buy new ones, want to invest, want to uh, build like new plants or create new entities, basically they want to develop their businesses. Sometimes, uh, on the other hand, the changes are imposed, so companies react to a change. Uh, the situation is like with uh, COVID-19, the situation like with war with Ukraine, they basically require from the companies some kind of reaction. They, they, they require some kind of adjustments of their policy and business priorities. But regardless what those changes are, we can say that uh, the way how our companies uh, act uh, is basically that they want to somehow support those changes by their business and IT infrastructure. They want to, or they expect certain support for those operations. And uh, we believe and we see that the organizations are basically becoming more and more aware of it. On the other hand, when we consider a change a certain challenge for a company, we see that these changes have a certain price tag. So basically, you cannot uh, change just before, just because you want to change. You basically want to achieve certain goals. And those goals are they, 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 the companies expect that by uh, having a certain growth by, by by being more efficient, they need to impose certain um, changes in the way how they act. So they want to be more consistent in terms of how the processes they perform. They are aware that the master data in multiple companies may uh, be inconsistent or maybe not fully unified, and that level of efficiency requires such a unifications. Integration between companies is another important factor. The fact that uh, there are multiple countries or localization expecting different type of changes within the solution uh, imposes uh, a reaction to a centralized development or solution maintenance. So all those elements basically are aimed to be more efficient, but on the other hand, also low were the costs of these integrations. So we want to have a lower cost of development. We want to better uh, synergize the way how a company in Germany, uh, Switzerland, or in Austria cooperate together. And we want to somehow limit uh, or remove the limits of the way of interoperability between those companies. So basically, on the one hand, we want to increase certain efficiency levels. On the other hand, 
we also measure this efficiency levels by decreasing certain uh, key process indicators uh, as a result of it. And the answer to those requirements, because we can consider those as requirements, is basically a common solution template. So uh, a solution, an information system infrastructure that, that will support an organization in a common, unified way. What does it mean a solution template? Well, usually we consider a solution template or we can consider a solution template a certain stack of, it's not the monolith, it's not like, like one big thing. It's actually a stack of a different set of functionalities where usually you start with a global basic template. This is the set of functions which are harmonized, unified across companies but also they support all this nitty gritty daily business. When you go to a local company, they usually have their local requirements because of the legal requirements, because of local specifics, maybe their business is a little bit different. So we have the set of requirements that needs to be somehow built on top of this basic template. Of course, if you are a larger company, you can also have more like optional uh, elements with a, on the level of a template. Like this is what it's described here as extended template. For instance, uh, if some of your companies uh, do use a warehouse management solution, some of them might not use that. So you may have this kind of an option available within your template although you actually not implementing warehouse management in every single company because my, they might not be using it or maybe their business profile is simply different. Eventually you have those local business requirements which are usually by rollouts considered simply optional and uh, frankly speaking companies generally tend to not to implement those. Why? Because they are the obstacle to achieving this synchronization and harmonization of the processes uh, on one hand, and usually uh, this differentiations also creates uh, certain difficulties in system maintenance on a long term. On the other hand, you could also consider a solution template and a set of accelerators, so set of elements required to do those projects uh, simply shorter, simply cheaper, simply more efficient, simply more unified. So again, you have a set of business processes which are available and clearly unified uh, across uh, all company. They might include business process models, some functional or technical specifications. Then you have a set of uh, customizing on development elements like default printouts, a set of way how uh, the pricing is considered. Any type of accelerators and tools uh, that can also speed up the way the projects are delivered, the way like documentation templates, uh, the um, tools like upload programs or gather files used to collect the data, they will be then later on uploaded into your SAP solution. If you are a larger organization, you can also consider accelerators like certain policies. For instance, policies for customizing policies for the way how the ABAP coding is developed or defined. Uh, you may also have some internal governance of so the people who are responsible on maintaining the solution on a long term. So there are some kind of guardians, the people who keep the solution intact, so they do not allow it to be somehow broken or, or stay inconsistent. And eventually there is this part of the hardware and software which is basically where your systems are being stored, what type of operating system the SAP installed on, or a database. Of course, it doesn't mean that your solution template needs to contain all of those elements. If you are a larger company, it might be worthwhile to invest in those elements because you simply will reuse it not one or two times, but maybe 10 times or 20 times. If you are a smaller company, so you have maybe operations available in two countries, maybe maybe in three countries, then you, knowing this, you may either rely on your partner's experience that may support some of those accelerators so we can deliver your projects faster, or simply decide that just elements of the setup will be applicable in your particular solution. 
uh, in terms of accelerators, and a very important element is definitely some type of documentations. Company te companies tend to use different type of uh, storage locations, like for instance, solution manager might be uh, quite of use with some type of project portals or repositories, like SharePoint is pretty common uh, nowadays. But basically what you want to have is like a common place where everybody within the company regardless whether you are working from 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 munich from warsaw uh, from vienna or maybe from paris you can still go into that location check your functional specification for a specific enhancement you can relate to your user guide or a manual whether you have a like new employee so we can refer this person and reuse this documentation as well so you have some kind of a reference that can be used within your company on a long term because we can consider this as a kind of investment also when you think about uh, a solution template is also a set of customizing settings and again some companies will simply say our operation is pretty straightforward and unified across companies we produce crops or we produce some type of meat products or we produce some uh, type of steel uh, elements and whether we do it in, in, in a location in Nigeria, uh, in Egypt, in, in uh, uh, let's say uh, France or in Germany, that's not so much important because eventually apart of course on local specific, the procedural stuff, the production stuff, the way how we sell stuff is pretty much unified. Then you can like technically speaking just just use or reuse the existing settings in the system, copy in it in a sense to some extent, and then just add these local specifics uh, that can be reused. If you are a larger company, you might consider setting up a certain um, template solution within your customizing and again reuse it on the long term. Uh, definitely it's worthwhile if you think about delivering projects uh, to more locations to think about the template also as a set of templates for the most common and in a sense troublesome and time consuming activities within your project. So apart from the documentation, which I already mentioned, like specifications for processes, some models, uh, reports for analysis for your gaps, so the local specific solutions that a particular company or a country requires, apart from the set of uh, customizing uh, specifications or maybe authorizations role, uh, roles and models. So you are sure that every production employee, again, regardless of the way and place where they work, they will have a similar set of authorizations uh, assigned and they work in a similar manner. Definitely a set of test scripts and scenarios which are usually created in this initial project uh, might be a good use uh, and that's always even you have like a limited uh, scope of implementation like in the two or three countries that's pretty much useful if you upgrade the system to to a new version like s4 hana uh, you might still get quite a use of it and reuse in some kind of regression testing for your project um, for the data migration that's usually most troublesome and time consuming uh, part of the project because of one thing, it's actually the volume of the data. The second is the sources of the data. So different systems, different type uh, and way how the data are set up and, uh, and um, defined. And then eventually the integration. We all know that SAP is pretty much integrated systems and way how the data is integrated or how the people work with this data in the legacy solutions, sometimes is not so we might just face it and having some type of gathering templates uh, some kind of data dictionaries or the tools like smw or migration cockpit uh, setup that can be quite of a use uh, if you want to do things more efficient of course any type of project templates that again can be either existing within your company if you do projects on your own or can be provided by a project partner like or for one uh, because of their experience and then provide you already with a lot of lessons than from their previous implementations. In terms of the delivery, uh, there are certain elements that can help you to deliver uh, the projects as well in a standardized manner that are uh, so-called code of conduct, so certain policies, how the customizing or development or the interface solutions needs to be set up 
a certain way how the data should be entered, uh, regardless where this is like an issue load, so when the company is being bringed on a, a, a solution, or authorizations I just mentioned before. Uh, there is also a lot of, um, let's say, standards that can be introduced in terms of identification of gaps, or for instance, implementation methodology that can also streamline the delivery process. If you think about uh, um, a solution template on a long term, it's also worthwhile to consider certain procedures or standards that can be used by the company in the longer period of time. And then, uh, again, depending on your complexity, but eventually on your particular needs, you may think about certain procedures, for instance, for release management. So, for instance, if you need to uh, introduce new changes, if they're legal, uh, but the ones that will actually impact, at least potentially, other countries which are on your system, you might think about uh, certain procedures that needs to be developed uh, so such a change won't disturb your normal operations in some other countries. There are different approaches that companies uh, apply here. We don't have enough time to, to elaborate on that more, but that's definitely an experience that a partner like All for One can provide you with that even if you don't have uh, currently maybe a concept or a model how this could be working for your particular solution. And last but not least, uh, when thinking about the template, we should also consider uh, a technical uh, architecture because we can now choose basically between the very much on-premise solution, which is installed somehow on our customer locations, uh, and on the other end of the spectrum, you have a software as a service, uh, which just now um, turns out to be uh, more like SAP way how to deliver stuff. There are also, of course, some, some intermediate solutions like also one um, digital center uh, or let's say the clouds like uh, Azure or Amazon that can be also to a level uh, simplify your infrastructure that you end up uh, hosting your SAP solution. Assuming that uh, you have some type of template or maybe you don't have one, you basically just interested in rolling out your existing solution from a company uh, to another which you just bought or maybe you just built uh, because your business grows develops or uh, somehow somehow needs that support uh, what we should consider to ensure that your delivery that the project and eventually the operational business end up with a successfully implemented solution well we should start with something which may somehow sound strange when you think about a SAP as an IT solution, but you really should start with a purpose. We believe, and I'm basing this on a really long-term experience, that people are actually knowing why they are being uh, blessed with a solution that, that the HQ is implementing in their country, they tend to work towards it, not against it. And we can all say that, let's say, such a large change like a rollout uh, always brings some some concerns, maybe some resistance, depending on the company. But knowing that certain standardization, the way that the companies will better work as a group, that they want to have uh, more efficient results. So again, we want to do stuff cheaper, maybe like lower uh, IT costs, maybe uh, do stuff uh, or the processes more, more efficiently, or simply, Somehow it can be also considered an improvement because an existing system is an old one, uh, maybe not fully supporting business operations. Therefore, it seems to be quite a, a worthwhile to, to go with uh, uh, and implement a solution like, like uh, centralized SAP. Then I've also mentioned that, that we can either consider a small project like just the one to another country and pretty much large program of multiple implementations all over the world depending on your business situation you should consider and plan it appropriately then there is delivery model which basically gives you three choices to make one is a waterfall approach which is an old sap asap uh, approach nowadays uh, more common seems to be sub activate methodology which is uh, focusing on more agile uh, iterative approach and, and uh, allows customer to better shape up the solution on a more frequent and iterative basis. 
And some larger companies also tend to have their own custom or proprietary methodologies, which we, as all know, for one, are also ready to use if such a needs exist. When you want to achieve success, you need to be sure that you are ready. So there are certain aspects that you want to check beforehand prior to actually making the project. One is actually maturity of organization, whether they have already their process documented or maybe they are completely unstructured and that's a work that needs to be done beforehand before the project to just assess how much the HQ, the central solution processes are aligned with these local processes where they do match and they're just maybe a very perfect match or maybe they're completely uh, not aligned and needs to be somehow optimized first beforehand. Then, of course, uh, there's business because we tend to see projects which are driven by the business, which is very good. Uh, and sometimes there are projects which are completely different, but drive by IT, which is also very good, but makes uh, convincing business a little bit harder uh, because they are eventually the, the end users and, and beneficiaries of the solutions that we're, we as a partner together with the company will deliver. Uh, we should also not underestimate the language skills. Uh, Eva mentioned that English seems to be like lingua franca uh, nowadays, uh, especially when you think global success and, and global presence. Although we also tend to see situations like, uh, for instance, people in the finance controlling on sales speaking perfectly uh, English and maybe people in the production or, or purchasing not so much. So these are also things that need to be addressed beforehand selecting proper people to a, to a specific project, knowing that they will be able to work with the consultants, uh, both, let's say, HQ business and the people all around the world. Uh, it's important also to say how much control you want to give to the local company in terms of uh, how much template within the template you want to impose. We basically can move between very fixed one when basically the message is, this is the template, this is what you get, just tell us your gaps. If you really, really need them, we might implement them for you. Then the second approach is that basically, if you got money and you are able or, and want, willing to invest in your, let's say, fully customized specific solution, then we are also allowing that. So then in the second scenario template works more like a starting point when local entity can, can adjust it or expand it uh, as much as they, they want to. Uh, obviously, the first one gives you more uh, centralized uh, control, but also more synergy effect because let's say the way uh, how those solutions are synchronized and harmonized give you the, the elements of, of efficiency we, we just discussed at the beginning of the solution. Definitely a scope is an important element of a project success and starting with geographical complexity. We, we tend to think about geography as just a location, but it also means legal stuff. It means certain requirements that the countries are more complex because of all legal requirements. Some others are maybe a closer one. Doing rollouts between uh, EU countries will be completely different when you go to a, uh, say, country in Asia or maybe in Africa. That's completely different challenge on that on that uh, legal aspect. Language we just uh, discussed, but uh, also we need to think about translations, like in documentation, maybe system language as well. That's an important important fact uh, as well. I'm not even mentioning the, the cultural diversity, the fact that people just know will tell you that we agree, but they will definitely not. So, so this happens, especially in Asian countries, and, and uh, we can also be prepared for that, knowing that we are uh, say facing that, part of, that type of a challenge. And last but not least, time zones. Uh, again, thinking about European rollouts, it's usually no issue, but if you think going really globally, then it might become an issue. A colleague of mine is just traveling to US now and we have just a very narrow over two hour window that people here and the US can communicate easily with each other, not really staying very, very up uh, late and very, very early, depending on which coast of US you are in doing the project. Then there's of course the legal complexity. Sometimes it's just you know one company called one legal entity and just one plant and sometimes it's basically a set of companies, a set of uh, production plans, despite being just one country. 
So this is both organizationally challenging because there are different people with different experience, but also location-wise. So if you need to travel to those locations, you know, sometimes uh, traveling all over the country uh, might just take hours, uh, and let's say flights might not always be possible. So that's also a thing that's uh, that's to be considered. Not mentioning, of course, uh, the strategy that comes with it, because you might decide to just go with a big bank for a number of locations, or maybe just do it or in a sequential manner uh, to be sure that you have the project under control. Then, of course, there's business and IT functionality. There's also the level of business components and then processes. And we also need to remember to combine those, that people from IT will definitely look at the implementation a little bit different than the people from business. And making this like a success means that Eventually, we are really understanding each other, and, and it's not either business, just business, and not IT, just IT uh, perspective. We need to understand what this means. Of course, there is also a legacy setup which needs to be somehow addressed. So, we need to decide whether SAP that you are bringing to a company will somehow decommission an existing solution, or maybe you need to adapt it, either integrate it with an SAP, maybe rebuild it, maybe change the platform. It, or maybe just replace it because if you just have like a common group CRM system based on uh, Salesforce, for instance, you might just abandon an existing one and replace it. Data migration, which is like a topic for a webinar itself, uh, but definitely uh, important to address beforehand and thinking about both scope of the data, people who own it, uh, model that is for, let's say, what's being managed globally or centrally and locally, the strategy, so what do you um, upload or migrate manually, automatically via tools, uh, the time that you require to collect, clean, the data to ensure that they are of a good quality and which uh, clients or systems you will be using for the data migration. Another thing important to ensure successful implementations are the roles of people. So the people know what they are responsible for and that both applies to a group, teams, IT and business as well, local operating concerns or so entities with their teams and of course partner or a partners if you have more companies uh, involved in your rollout initiative. Then you can easily say, take those people, take those roles, build a very clear and concise responsibility accountability matrix to ensure that both all project activities, project roles are properly assigned and everybody knows who he or she is responsible for. Eventually, there is transition to operations. Of course, let's say every project has its end and we, together with the customer, need to ensure that we do know what happens after the project. So there is already a kind of an application managed uh, service uh, partner. It can be either all for one or maybe some type of an existing partner which will take over uh, this operational support after the project is done. But of course, it again requires careful planning of the transition itself, managing the knowledge in terms of documents and, and data, and then ensuring that the company is ready operationally to be able to operate after the project is completed. Is it a mission impossible? Well, we do believe, based on our uh, experiences, that it's quite possible mission, and it's, it's, we are able to, to deliver such projects on a global scale. But of course, if you think about delivering, that also raises some concerns. One is, let's say, whether how to behave in terms of current S4 uh, system resolution. And basically, you can either continue with your existing setup and maybe just you know wait for what happens with S4. You can think about transforming the solution already, the one that you have in HQ, to S4.1 and think about this as a basis for a future rollout to the following countries. Or maybe you could consider some other approach. Just basically use it as a pilot to implement a new version of S4 in the to be rollout, roll it out company, and then just based on this experience, roll it back somehow to your original original HQ. That's definitely uh, uh, things to consider if you think about S4 and rollout planning.